embarrassing. Before we start today's show from Hollywood, I have somebody I want you to meet. We had uh, the first show uh, last week. We started, and this gentleman, Mark Collins, came to see the show. Mark has cerebral palsy. Someone brought him. And we were talking. I said, oh, come back. And Mark came back today, an hour on a bus, alone, by himself. And I'm so pleased to have you. And I figure if you can take an hour on a bus, we should send you back by limo. So we're going to send you back by limo. And I would like you and a friend. Do you live at home? Parents? No. Friend? OK. How many friends? Two. Two. You and two friends, which is three, or make it four, what the hell, find someone that's a sort of friend. And <laughs> or eat a lot, because we have dinner for four for you at Carl's and Charlie's. Whenever you want, you figure it out, all right? Today on our show from Hollywood, finally the truth behind the headlines, that old road warrior herself, Zsa Gabor. <laughs> <laughs> the only woman voted least likely to join a carpool will tell us, <laughs> will tell us about the ticket and the trial and the slap heard around the world. Also, from one of TV's hottest shows, Murphy Brown, we're going to have ditzy Faith Ford, who plays the weather girl. And we'll meet the L.A. slaves, the sex, son, and the scapel. Their tans are deep, are their outlook shallow. These bronze beauties will do anything to look good, but can they talk? We're going to find out. It's all coming up right here, so stay where you are. <laughs> my first guest, except I just hope she didn't drive here today. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the irrepressible, the one, the only, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Yeah. Comes you. I put this dress on. This is the dress I was arrested in. <laughs> and you won't believe it, John. I had handcuffs in the back, and this went up, 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 and I couldn't pull it down. And here I sat on the street like a streetwalker. Maybe it's up, and all the police, they were walked by. They could see up until Honolulu. And I couldn't, <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't pull it down. And the district attorney later, and I wore it once in the court, said to me, my dear, you didn't have a petticoat on when this happened. How in the hell does you know what I had underneath my uh, dress? We know. Now, why did you dress up for court? Leona Helmsley was told, dress down. Leona you Helmsley, looked, you Leona sat Helmsley there. stole money from the government. I just got an expired driver's license. <laughs> but you sat it. there, you sp the perfume going. You looked fabulous in court. Well, I'm an actress. I'm going to look like hell in court just yeah. because people want publicity. You know, Joan, to be serious a moment, when this whole thing started, I told the judge, I don't want the television cameras in the, in the courthouse. And he said, come in my, in my chambers. And I went with my lawyer to the chambers. And my dear, he wanted the television. I didn't. I don't need this type of publicity. Who needs to be insulted over and over for two and a half weeks, called an old lady? The damn Why was he turned... so mean? Why did he pick on you? Because you said I, he picked on I figured on it you. all out. Not only him, the, because they both survived at home. One, the judge has a 
So an obscure dress designer wife probably said, <laughs> give it to that bitch every eve morning. And her husband does not the woman. And that district attorney's wife, I saw. If you would see the district attorney's wife, you would understand why she hated me. That's how far I go about it. But a lot of people pick on you. You but were minding your myself. business with your, your two dogs that I'm sure were in the cage. I, I want, I and want they you yelled, to, yes, well, I let's want go back you to, to read this. This is the Hello magazine, the biggest European English magazine. Yes. Look what they said. You know, when I said, the, this policeman said, F off. And I thought, wait a minute, I thought I can go. Read what the English magazine writes. What did they write? Me. Zsa Zsa was... No, no, just on the underneath. What? This is underlined. Reco yes, Zsa, says Zsa, Zsa His answer says Zsa, Zsa was F off, uh -huh. which is precisely what she did. In Europe? <laughs> in, in, in Europe, guys, listen to me, Kevin. In Europe, when somebody says F off, it means you can go. This is English. This is England. And they, they but do. you understand, you understand English. Well, if they lived here long I, enough, I was, right? My dear, no. You knew what he meant. Nobody in my, no, I didn't. Nobody in my whole entire life said it to me or will ever say it again. Yes. F off. I saw this is a jargon what the policeman says to a lady when she waits 50 minutes in the sunshine without the air conditioner on. And he didn't give me a ticket. He was called up, we found out later, and said, I just arrested Jaja. You know, the Beverly Hills police has a bet with, between themselves who can arrest more famous people. You better be careful. You said, I didn't drive here. I'll never drive again. I'm afraid to drive. Are you drive scared? What, what about your license now? No, what was that? There's yeah. so many stories I have to going tell you about the yeah. license. They said that your license, you had the, the age yeah. change. And the hair color yes. and the weight. Well, six months before this happened, or a year before, I drove back with my secretary from the stables where I horseback ride. Thank God for favors, I have horses so I don't have to be in Beverly Hills too much. Yes, I really mean that. And this is true. I <coughs> and I, uh, three Mexican or Latino men, I have a Rolls Royce which costs 245,000. Your Rolls Royce, not a Rolls Rolls. A Rolls Royce. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You I got can't. the car and you didn't have it registered. We uh, all know that. It was registered, as a matter of fact. So fact, why do they pick on you? Now let me tell you what happened yes. to the driver's side. So I. The guy makes my, stops in front of me at 55 miles an hour. My car breaks up. The Mexican comes, or Latino comes to me and says, your driver's license. He gave the driver's license and says, follow us. And the girl, a very clever American girl, I'm not that clever because I, I, I think everybody's nice. John, all my life, I like to think people are nice because we all have a cross to bear. What right. the hell am I going to be mad at? So I give the driver's license. The girl says, don't follow him, Miss Cabo. We were on the freeway. He, they might take your jewelry or something. So we drove home. I went to the driver's license office next day, and I asked for a new one. I told what happened. Now, six months later, a lawyer writes a letter to me, saying, we want money for that Mexican's car. But the car was a $200 jalabi. He didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> now, wait a second, guys. He didn't have a driver's license. He didn't have anything. So my husband went on the telephone and says, well, he sent us back the driver's license, which was changed now. My picture, born 1938, black hair, much thinner, 108 pounds, I like that. I wish I were. <laughs> <laughs> and this driver's license we kept as a joke in, in a Rolls Royce, which we never drive. Frederick has a blue Rolls Royce, and we have a, we have a blazer. So this white Rolls Royce was locked up in my house because I just come back from Rome, where I made a two-hour special for the Vatican a week before. And the car is always locked Your up. Your life is just, then I, I can't follow your life. I don't, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> going to go to jail. That's what worries well, me. Well, my lawyer found out last night, the judge, who of course never does his homework, he took his makeup on and wanted to look good on television, <laughs> he said that I have to make a psychiatrist, psychiatric, I don't know how to say it in English, a, they have to check up if I'm normal or insane. <laughs> <laughs> you never I was serve. never normal. I You'll never, never go to jail I, then. This is wonderful, <laughs> Well, let me ask you something. If you had just been a normal Beverly Hills woman and just a plain Rolls Royce, do you think 
<laughs> Do you think the police would have been as, as bad to you as you say they were? Now, this guy was absolutely gorgeous, let's face it. That, there's no better specimen. If he would be a horse, I would put him out on stud feet. He's so good. <laughs> I th if I would have not been a celebrity, he would have treated me all right. But as I had my big ring on, I had this dress on, I had the white roses, everything. And I had a, a, a plate on my car, which I have for the last seven years for Mr. Nixon, which didn't help either. Re Re-election year, George Gabor Richard Nixon, which uh, it was like red for a bull because he's a... Jesse Jackson, man, which I understand. Now, let me ask you. You, I've seen you in, um, in, in the White House with the Bushes. Why didn't, when all this started, why didn't you just call up the White House and say, Babs, I need help. <laughs> I am the judge. I, I need help. I would never in a million years ask, and Mrs. Reagan lives next door, my very close friend, and Mr. Nixon, God knows I was booed off the stage when he was Watergate, and I was for him, and I'm still for him because he opened Russia and China. I don't ask help. I don't need help for no one. Not even my own sister Ava gave me help. I don't now, need Now, where, where was Ava through all this, Shasha? Where was Ava? Where was Ava? Exactly. Why wasn't Ava at your side? Ava was in Elizabeth Arden's beauty spa in Arizona with Mrs. Rockwell. So, she just didn't help you at all? No. So you were really on your own with just your husband? Darling, we all are on our own. Oh. When you're in trouble, we're always on The people are only with you when you're all right. When you're in trouble, even except Sidney Sheldon, the writer is an angel, Catherine Grace is my good friend, and a couple of handful people, Mrs. Hannah Barbera, Joe Barbera. Are, are you angry with Ava for not being there? I am never angry with Ava. I know Ava since we are born. I am <laughs> <laughs> it, makes, it makes sense to me. I love Ava. Ava. Even when she calls you her older sister, do you Ava get upset with that? Ava is a real... She oh. always <laughs> wants them. She always... But Ava is wonderful, though. She's... Ava is not like me. You see, I'm, a free... I'm a free spirit. I do what I want. Ava is always shocked about me, but Ava loves me, and I love her. I really I do. That. Hold on. We have a question here for you. Since your trial, um, you've had a lot of publicity, and you've been on every major talk show. Um, why haven't you been on The Tonight Show? Why was I not there? Because I don't like Johnny Carson. As a matter of fact, I have a little dog who's today at the veterinary. His name is Johnny. Tony's getting fixed because he's a sex <laughs> man. But I've heard rumors that you have a reason not to go on the Carson show. Well, uh, Johnny Carson is a very, he's the biggest hypocrite of our century. But Americans like hypocrites. Look, look, he's 30 or 20 years, the biggest star in America. And you know, when you are sitting next to him during the commercials, says, honey, his wives, all his wives are my good friend. I have a little bungalow in Beverly Hills Hotel. Why don't you see me later? Johnny is a big hypocrite. He actually is a sex maniac. He was never, never in his... <laughs> George, I have to finish this. There's nothing wrong about being a sex maniac, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I find Johnny very gorgeous, though. But who wants to sleep with your best girlfriend's man? I don't. Jaja. Yes, ma'am. If you had to do it all over, would you have handled yourself the same way? Well, honey, if anybody would call you an effing whore, you would hit him, too. My mother says she would scratch his eyes out. Why should I? Because I was, my car was not expired, by the way. Only the, the driver's license, which was not the real driver's license, I had with me. Why should anybody dare to call me an effing old, if, whatever you call it? I mean, this is awful. Let me ask you. you John, had... you look beautiful. You really look beautiful today. I love me? the outfit. Oh, thank you. You're, you're and you look great, too. Let me ask you. You've had, you've had eight husbands. Yeah, that's not right. enough. I mean, Are you rich? <laughs> <laughs> Did you end up... Doing well? I never in my life got alimony, nor did I ask it. I don't charge for, because if I sleep as a man, I want to sleep with him too, so why shall he pay for it? I'm not a tar. <laughs> a question. Yes, uh, Zsa, Zsa if the policeman called you today and said, you know, let's be friends, what would you say? I probably would be friends with him because I have such a good, I like the policeman. So what is a big, gorgeous macho says, that little bitch, Zsa, Zsa, how dare she do that to me? I understand the policeman. I don't understand the district attorney. I don't understand the judge. I told them I don't want publicity. I didn't want those cameras in the courthouse. And the judge took me in his private chambers with my lawyer and said he wanted the camera in there. So, I mean, look, the, the, 
the policeman is a great big goof, a gorgeous dummy who is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> but he is. He's be if he wasn't stupid, he wouldn't have done that. I mean, when he was in the witness stand and they said to us to react it, and I said, I'm afraid to go close to you. He said to me, come closer, honey. And I went closer because I like him. <laughs> He's a gorgeous hunk of a man who says, this bitch, Raja, how dare she strike me? I didn't strike him. I hit his helmet because he's much too tall to me. But what nobody realized is that his gun was in my face. Thing. And these people, have a, they have a license to kill. They could have said, they could have shot me and say, self-defense. Who would have stopped it? Let me ask you, why do people pick on you? You were sitting in a plane, your two dogs, I'm sure were not running around. Just knowing you, I know those dogs were muzzled and tied to your leg. <laughs> I know why it happened. One of my doctors, all the way back, was a housekeeper in, in a macho man in his Louis Vuitton, and the little six month old puppy was in front of us. Tell you what happened. I had my, my husband was beaten up in Beverly Hills, taking out $200, $200 from, the, from the bank. And so he couldn't come with me. I had to go to Palm Beach to open my house because there was a party in our owner. So I had my jewelry in sort of a zipper bag, I didn't want it to be hauled up, and she kept on saying this to her, this, you, I want to put it up. I said, you're not going to put it up, it's on luck. And she kept on picking, and next to me sent a wonderful gentleman from Atlanta, who was here for a, some kind of a convention, and he said, Jaja, there's always one bitch who's going to pick on the celebrity, you're the one. And then I said to her, I must say I said that, I said, are you the bitch who's going to pick on me today? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, all hell broke through. She wired to Atlanta. There's an unruly passenger. What the hell was unruly? I was sat there, looked at a very good movie was on, and this wonderful all the not all that gentleman sat next to me. They never and the dog was the little six month old puppy. There was next to me a mother with a baby says, Let me see the puppy. A little chit, so they are that small. And they sleep, the moment the noise starts on everybody. We picked up little his name is Genghis Khan. We picked up Genghis and we showed the baby and then put him back. And then the stewardess put him where the coats are hanging. I even was worried that he got suffocated. Delta Airline hates dogs. Listen, I have two animal shelters. Once six dogs arrived, which were Downstairs, they all arrive dead, frozen. And I don't stand for that because I do anything for an animal. I kill myself for an animal. And this woman, she didn't want it. She wasn't against the dogs. I had a new sable coat, which I don't want to wear anymore. I had this diamond ring, and she hated me. And I understand her. She didn't have a diamond and a sable. You know something? When you tell it, I believe you. I'm getting very nervous. We're going to go to commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back. I believe you. You have a question. Uh -huh. Yes, I want to know if you were approached for a movie, and if so, was it a comedy or drama? This is, for, to me, this is an idiotic comedy for me, if you ask me. It was a drama while I was sitting in that room two and a half weeks, bored to death. All the lies, all the, she's old, she's a liar. I'm not accustomed people talk to me like that. The district attorney kept on saying, you're a liar. I never lie. My daddy said when I was little, you have to be a genius to lie because you have to remember what you lied. So I learned then not to lie. <laughs> Let me ask you, people are very resentful about you cashing in on this. And there's a video out now. So far, it cost me $40,000 in lawyer's fees. The video, we are just stopping. We didn't hear about it, but I hear that, that the judge, Ruben, went on Entertainment Tonight of Thursday while I was in New York and said, uh, noblesse oblige, we all want to make some money out of that video. I didn't want them to be in, in the courthouse. I don't need, against your question there, this type of publicity. I'm very famous, honey. I represented Montgomery Ward. That's six, all right. Now, let me tell you, six years ago, they put in every star's name in a computer in Chicago to find out who could represent Montgomery Ward as a goodwill ambassador for the auto club. And John Wayne and I came out. John Wayne, of course, didn't need the money I, like, usually do. And I, for eight, <laughs> <laughs> for eight years, I represented them. The best account I ever had. I love you guys. Now, what happened now? Did they ask you after the cop pulled you over? 
and you slap them, they say maybe you won't represent us anymore? Have you lost any business? Oh, no, I, I don't have it for four years already because Mo uh, Mobile Gas bought up Montgomery Ward. No, I don't. I, now. Oh, I lost lots of business. I have a big advance from Delacord to finish my book two months ago. Who can think about anything else but that police? Oh, you've got the some book now. Uh, you've got a book. Oh, have you got... John, I would even buy it retail. John. I am <laughs> not got a book. John, I am not going to put this in my book. This you is better. Too, No, never. My book is much more interesting. I was brought up in Budapest, Switzerland, Vienna, Turkey. Yeah, I was ambassador at the age of 15. I don't need it. This is a slap in the face of America by the judge and by the district attorney, not by me. They could have said, Miss Cabor, pay the fine for the for expert. Yeah. And Finish it. Now the judge says, Georgia, how can I prolong a court hearing? I sat there like an idiot, listening that I'm a lie, I'm old, but, I'm this and that. I mean, who but, needs that? But you also did some funny things. You have a great sense of humor, and you did a very funny commercial. We have a clip. I'm oh, going to no, show the no, clip. Oh, no, no, wait a second. Oh, let me show the clip first, I'm, then we'll talk. Uh, okay. Here comes the clip. Here's the clip of Georgia. You wouldn't believe this, darling. That when I first came to America, my English wasn't this good. But then a wonderful thing happened to me. I started to watch Wheel of Fortune. And I also learned the greatest proverb of them all. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Play Wheel of Fortune tonight at 7.30 on Channel 2. They can take away my husband. They can take away my driver's license. But darling, don't touch my wheel. Don't touch my wheel. Is there a cloud over your head? You say, my husband oh. walks down the street. They beat him up. <laughs> I, I, my mother takes a bus, unfortunately. No, don't, don't speak no, about No, but we heard mother. your mom. Forget mother. No, forget. we heard that she had an accident. I don't want her to leave No, no, me. your sister didn't show up in the courtroom. No, that, that is you normal. Get, you get screw. <laughs> you get screw when you do a commercial. Do you ever stop and think, <laughs> I'm not getting out of bed? I mean, that's it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm an absolute optimist. I watched you every night on TV, and you looked really scared. How scared were you? Did I look scared from the policeman? Honey, I thought he was going to kill me. I sat on that, on that floor there. Five or six, the Beverly is best arrived, looking at me, looking like this, sitting like a whore on the street on the corner, or a dope pin. And I said to myself, Georgia Gabor, this time you got it. They're going to shoot you. Then I said, oh, God, maybe Eva will not mind it so much. She gets my part. Then, <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that is a nasty remark. And then I said, maybe so, I'm still dying, not so old and not so ugly. I sort of sat and screamed, help, help, help. Not one soul helped, except one Israeli guy who was here as a visitor asked the police if he can put my sunglasses on. It was one third in data. He said, F off. He came and, and told it in court, a Yugoslav woman, a simple, wonderful Yugoslav woman called Rosa Perez, came over and said, what are you doing to Georgia? She didn't do anything. That woman was treated in the court like if she were dirt on the feet. This is a country. We are all refugees. She's a refugee with two children. They said the son was in, court, in, in jail. You know what the son done when he was 15? He has a skating board, and the skating board was too fast, so the police put him in jail. The, on the other side, the police department had an 18 year old boy from Syria, I think, or I don't know where, whose son, the millionaire club, killed his father. He was chewing gum, had airing son on a pigtail. And that boy said, she is lying. Who the hell is that boy? How dare is him lying? A little, he was five times, he says, the policeman is so wonderful. He's a father figure. Of course he's a father figure to him. If you look in the policeman's background, you know why the hell he's a father to him. <laughs> Can I say something? I want you to come to my house and be a dinner guest because I'll never worry for conversation. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrific. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Next, people who will do anything for brawn and beauty. the ditzy, corky Sherwood, Murphy Brown's Miss America turned news reporter. But in real life, this woman is no ditz. Within a year of arriving in Hollywood, she not only landed a major role in the hit sitcom, she also landed a husband. And before we even talk to her, let's take a little look at the role of Murphy Brown. Am I glad I caught you? And I hadn't even left the building. <laughs> I completely forgot to 
give you the list of things I want from the duty-free shop. <laughs> I wrote them down in order of importance, but if you give yourself enough time at the airport, you should be able to get everything. Now, I definitely need a bottle of Shalimar perfume. Not the cologne, not the toilet water, the perfume. They may try to sell you one of those boxes with a lot of little perfumes in it. I don't want that. If you get it, I'm not paying for it. Please welcome Faith Ford. Now, who is that role based on? The truth. I, you know, is I, it Phyllis George? <laughs> Everybody says it's based on Phyllis George. A lot of people have told me that it reminds them of her. Um, I didn't base it on her because I don't personally know her. But um, I don't know. It's a lot of people from my, my life, you know, because I only really know the personal Corky. As far as on a professional standpoint, I've been compared to lots of people. I mean, in fact, every news person that I've met knows someone that's like Corky. So... I don't know. I, I, she's a lot of people. I, I compare her to a lot of beauty queens I've known in my past. Were you a beauty queen? No. Because you're so, so pretty. <laughs> you never tried out? No, not at all. I, it was never my thing. My sister was now. My sister, I don't know if you call her a beauty queen. She was Miss Louisiana National Teenager. Well, that's, a, be that's a beauty queen. Well, she's beautiful, but she's also very, very smart. Do you find that people come up to you and say, you're corky, and I bet you're just dits and fun? <laughs> Well, you know, in high school, it's funny how I sort of, you, you know, you learn how to play these acts, you know. And in high school, I, I would put on these acts, you know, sort of being ditzy or whatever. I think it, most of it was to sort of be accepted. You know, you do anything to be accepted. If you're attractive in any way, and I was, I was very studious, I tried to keep up my grades, and I was very involved in extracurricular things. So I'd put on certain acts or whatever, but I've never really had anyone say, no, I don't consider myself a ditz at all. And Call you're married now, and you're married to an actor. Yes. And you're in one of the most successful series. What is he doing? Is he working? Well, he works. He works. He does a lot of things. He's actually, right now he's in acting class. That's how I met him. But he is very talented in lots of areas. He just got his real estate license. Do you feel, is it hard? Because in our business, that's what... It's so well, is it hard? equally talented, you know, it's and one gets a hit series, and one doesn't, and it's very tough. He's very supportive. But see, I think the difference is, when I met him, I was, I was working. So it was never an instance where we met, we neither one were working, and then I sort of yeah. bloomed out. I was always working, so it was never a situation. He was used to it at the beginning. And he's just a really good person, and I guess he loves me for who I am, and I love him for who he is, and I don't ever think about that. But I know that he's also very talented, and it's just a matter of time. I've got so a lot of talented friends, you isn't know. Isn't it frustrating? It's frustrating sometimes because, you know, you just want to be able to tell people, casting directors and other people, oh, but you don't know, he's very cute. Don't you yeah. think he's cute? I, yeah. I really think he would be great for this, but you really can't do that. Yours came, with all due respect, because, yes, you have talent, but you also need a lot of luck in our business. Right. Your success is phenomenal. You came, mm -hmm. and you tried out for the role, and mm -hmm. there you are on Murphy Brown, and then you got nominated for an Emmy. Emmy, yeah. Do you realize how fantastic a year that was? It's weird because I don't, I don't know why. I don't know how it happened. It was, I just go and I go to work and I try to do my best, and it's just amazing that I was nominated. And, and everyone said, "Well, don't you hope you win? If you don't win, are you going to be disappointed?" I can't even think about it. It's all so overwhelming in the first place. I'm just trying to keep my head on straight and just work. Did you find <laughs> it hard to work with Candace because she's? Such a pro and such a star. Were you just thinking, you know, at first I, talk I was to her? at first I was a bit intimidated, but it, that ended very quickly because she's such a down to earth person and she's very, very supportive. And she respects all of us a lot. She really respects the work that we do, so that helps immensely, you know. And this is her first sitcom, you know? So she's new at this too. It's not like she's been doing many of these, you know, year after year after year. Did you know from the beginning, could you smell that it was right? Um, it's interesting because I was having hesitations about it at the beginning. I thought, well, it's going to be great because it's with Candace Bergen, and I know they're going to give it a shot, but I thought, I don't know if I want to play a ditz forever, you know, because everyone says it's going to go for five years, it's going to go for seven years, but I was like, I don't want to play a ditz for that long. But the producer pr promised me that she wouldn't be a ditz forever, that she's going to learn, and in fact, she has. What did she she's, learn? <laughs> she's grown. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> How? Well, I mean, they've, they've had to put her into situations to where she's had to actually admit that she needs to work. 
to be a journalist. And one of the shows coming up, she and Murphy are nominated for the same award. And she wins. Should I tell you that? Oh. I just gave away. No. Well, that's somebody wins. I didn't say who. <laughs> somebody wins. And she goes on, and we'll see how she deals with that. But actually, it might be airing before this year. I don't know what happens. It but. doesn't matter. They don't watch. They can, usually with a sitcom, with all due respect, <laughs> you can pretty much figure out the ending. You know what I mean? That's true. You watch for the lines, not so much the plot. Right. But you are ditzy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for being thank on. Thank you. I'm just going to my parents. Sh where are they? They're right out there in the front. Oh, aren't they that's very they're nice right looking? There. Oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey. Next, people who will do anything for brawn and beauty. When some of us just run to a grocery store, my next three guests are rushing to an appointment at a tanning salon. Or they're going to work out. The hours that we might spend behind a desk doing homework, they spend at health clubs. They're lifting weights, they're doing aerobics, floor exercises. Christian Letelier has a master's degree, but he doesn't care. He would rather work irregular jobs than allow them the time to work on his body to keep it in perfect shape. Am I right? That's right. Yes. Gina Lim is a part-time nurse Part-time because three to five hours each day is spent working out, and that's why she looks the way she looks, bitch. And... <laughs> <laughs> Looking great. And Morgan Carey left a well-paying job in New York to maximize his time for training and working out. I welcome all three of you. Thanks, John. And you look unbelievable. That's to start with. I mean, just... Um... <laughs> First of all... Take off your shirts. Already? I want to see, Already? I want to see kidding? the oh, washboards. Come on. come on, come on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, how, and you do the same now. Well, <laughs> I don't have, I'm not There's a not an ounce yeah. of fat, and it looks like I got like a little God. bit of cat. Well. How much good. time do you spend working out every day? I'd say about two or three hours. Two to five. On two to five. Day. Yeah. You know, between like lifting, running bleachers, karate, rock climbing, just. Do you do you do it every single day? Do you say seven it's Tuesday? Thank God I don't have to do it. No, I work out seven days a week religiously. Every even like <clears throat> if you were getting married, would you go in that morning? Oh, you bet. You Especially mean, that morning. Especially. Yeah, because you want, you, <laughs> you need. Look good, right? It's a great way to relieve stress, and when you're getting married, it's probably a real stressful day, so it's a good way to alleviate a lot. What of happens? If you miss a day, I do you personally get upset? feel very uh, crappy about myself. I, I, I have a lot of anxiety. Uh, I turn into uh, an ogre if I don't work out, basically. I take days off. I mean, you I'll do take, take, I'll days take off. a day off. If I listen to my body, my body, I feel sluggish one day. I say, okay, I'm not going to go in and lift. But maybe I'll go out and ride my bike on the beach or something. But always something physical, something going yeah, on, but not too. necessarily lifting. Do you think you're obsessed? You know what I'm saying? Like Definitely. I, yeah. I mean, so it's, it's almost like a sickness. I yes. mean, it's a wonderful it's a sickness. Bit of a I'd rather have this sickness than any other than type a, of than a drug habit. Uh, but addiction. it's a, but it's an addiction, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, if I don't work out every day, I I feel like I I I'm missing out on something. How old were you when you you got you didn't wake up at five and say, <laughs> well, from now on, hi mom, let's work out. What what made you start to do this? Uh, you as, have a as, master's degree. I have a master's degree in marine affairs, law and economics, yeah. applied to the oceans. Uh, as a kid, I was very active. I'm uh, one of four boys, so we played all the rough house games, cowboys and Indians. And but when did you say I did all the yeah. team sports, and uh, then I was a lifeguard and uh, did tournament karate in college, ran track, uh, all the sports. And then as an adult, I just started uh, getting myself into a regime sort of to compensate for the fact that I was no longer in college, no longer kind of in the team sport arena. But in a way, it's almost ruining your life because you gave up a really, well, a career career. Well, I can like always go. Ruining a life, though, because oh, you. And you can always go back yeah. to that. It's, it's a matter of uh, enjoying your, your days on the planet as best you can. I, and I think you can what a lot of people lot of tend to things. go into this stereotype thing where they say, oh, well, you're obsessed with your body, so you don't lead a well-rounded existence. Well, I think all of us lead well-rounded existences. Um, 
you know, where... Well, you just want different things. I mean, obviously, you're not looking... If Donald Trump called you up right now and said, I've got a $400,000 a year job for you. You got to work 16 hours a day for 10 years, but then you're going to be rich beyond belief. No time to work out, would you take it? I'd tell him 100000 a year, and I'd train him, get him the best shape <laughs> of his life. But you wouldn't go for a desk job? No way. What about you? No. I, um, I'm a nurse. I work with... Uh, in fact, I work with an oral surgeon that you met, Peter Moy. Oh, sure. And I work with him three days a week, and I teach aerobics, and I'm a private trainer. And I chose to do three part-time jobs as one full-time job, just so I can work out at the same time. Now, your body is gorgeous. Do you look for a man with a gorgeous body, or Definitely. do you look for a man with a smart head? Both. Yeah, Both. well, don't we all? But uh, <laughs> usually, you know, well, the initially... barbells make the brains go down to the chest. No, you know? not necessarily. I'm, I, don't, you, I don't believe usually, that. Usually, no, I don't usually, I'm, I'm I, a... Albert Einstein was flabby. We cannot deny oh. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think there's skinny. definitely a time factor. I mean, if you're going to give up two to five hours of your day, for your body, you know, you're taking that away from the brain power. No, you, because that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a stereotype. You know, a lot of people are spending two to five hours a day in, involved in recreational drugs, chasing women, well, chasing true. men it in nightclubs. depends on clubs. how you allocate we, we, Instead of coming Definitely. home smelling like smoke, we come home smelling like sweat. I mean, yeah. sure, it's a no, trade-off. No, which is great, but, well, what about sex? <laughs> no complaints. Now or later? <laughs> <laughs> no, what about, what about, what, what about sex? Are you, I mean, do you look for a woman that has as good a body as you? I try to. Yeah. If possible. Oh, uh, just here, so we go. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so I guess opposites I'm, are. I'm certainly attracted to <laughs> women with beautiful bodies. Well, yeah. yeah. Initially, it, the the physique and the looks are going to attract you to someone, and then beyond that, it's conversation, how much you have in common, where their intellect yeah. is, where their. Now, where are you going to be? Seriously, how old are you now? Thirty. Thirty. What's going to happen to you when you're fifty years old? You're going to be a great body with an old man's face. I beg yeah. your no, but you know, do you ever think, I want to settle down, I want to do... At one point, somebody's going to say, that doesn't mean you is a younger, a down, younger guy to be an aerobics instructor? Well, I'm I mean, you're in a very young... I'm a, I'm, I work one-on-one, -on -one and uh, I have no insecurities about looking like hell at 50, or certainly about being able to find a woman that but I can settle down But do you think about your futures at all? Absolutely. And where, where do you see yourself at 50, doing what? Probably working in sports medicine. All right, what about you? Still, um, probably teaching aerobics and still working as a nurse. Now and you hopefully at 50, I'll have children. You'll still married. have a killer body. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you all have tans. Yep. What about everything I've been told for the last year? Don't go in the sun. Keep out of the sun. I the do. Sun is I lay out You're in the sun. You're a nurse. Tell me. I lay out in the sun once every two or three months. I wear 29 when I go out in the sun. 29. Screen. I just. I'm really fortunate to be able to get tan in a short amount of time, and it lasts a long amount of time. What about the two of you? Yeah, I, I try to put on a sunscreen whenever I'm out in the sun and uh, do fake bake. Fake Re bake. Fake bake. <laughs> and, Hand uh, from the tube. Hand from the tube. Well, we're going to be back now. We're going to meet a woman who went to a plastic surgeon to get her body into shape. She's a plastic surgery junkie, but she has had everything done, but she looks amazing. So we'll see if we can do it another way. All right. <laughs> self-described plastic surgery junkie. She has had liposuction on her knees, liposuction on her thighs, a tummy tuck, her breast lifted, a mini lift, a nose job, a lower eyelids done, I mean, which I just can't go over because she looks great. She is 50, how old? 51 years old with a re what remains the original Eileen Hannon. Welcome to the show. So... Underneath your little black number there, mm -hmm. we have a tight tummy, <laughs> yep. firm thighs, right. tip, tip top boobs. Well, yeah. All tip right. Top. <laughs> and no exercising. No, I exercise. But, but not like but they do. Not like they do. No, I mean, I, I, used to, I used to run 10 miles a day. And when did you stop? Uh, about three, four years ago. I just didn't have time anymore. So I still try to do seven miles a day, six days a week. But maybe... Walking. I, I just... The maybe injuries plastic surgery, though, for you. What do you want to do next? Um, 
of maybe a little bit more liposuction on my thighs, even out the areas. How much does it cost? How much have you put into your body so far? Uh, About? Well, total. A good 20,000 or more. Good 20,000. Now, what about you, Christian? How much have you put in for gym fees and all that? Oh, God. About? A uh, thousand bucks a year, maybe. A thousand bucks a year. Are you as obsessed, Eileen, with your body as they are? Yep. Yeah. Don't you think everybody is? I think everybody is, but it, um, the people that I'm sitting over here with, <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you're just born with great legs. You're born with great skin. I mean, certain things you just can't have. And I think if I worked out forever, 10 hours a day, I would never have legs like that. I would never, I just couldn't. Were any one of the three of you really piglets when you were kids? No. Or did you no. all? No, because Christian, you said you had always an athletic body, right? right. What about you, Gina? No, I've, uh, I've always practiced a good diet and I've always worked out and been athletic. Always but on basically you weren't like a real fat, no. Kid, so you basically had something to start with. Right. Yeah. All right, now what about you, Morgan? I was crippled as a child. I had cerebral you palsy. You were? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm serious. The left side serious? of my body was completely spastic. This leg was two inches shorter than this leg. So you started to work out? I was trained, put into martial arts classes very young as a form of therapy. I went to physical therapy at St. Charles Hospital on a very regular basis. So you really turned your body around? Through exercise. Well, the other two had good arts. things to start with already. We have a question. I was wondering, these people with the gorgeous bodies there, what do they feel about steroids? I'm totally against steroids. I am against never them. touched them, never will. Any type, any type of any type. artificial, yeah. artificial it's not worth stimulation. It, no. Eileen, are you frightened about getting older? Because I'm scared of death. I mean, I, I, mean, I was coming, and the old, the, the old joke, the alternative is better. Uh, but um, I don't like to get up in the morning and see another crow's foot sticking its way toward my nose. I don't like this, you know. When my boobs hit my knees, I get very just depressed. Last time I was giving myself a pedicure, I went 12 toes. I don't like this. I'm dealing with it, but I don't like it. Are you, are you worried about it? My boobs already dropped to my waist. That's why I first had it done. So I don't think it's going to drop down again. Because once right. it's there, usually it stays. But I'm not afraid of getting older. I just feel as I get older, I can keep looking better by having little nips and tucks. And keep yourself up. Yeah, all the time. I thank all four of you very much. We'll be back in a second. <laughs> This has been such an incredible uh, group of shows that we've put together these last uh, week and a, and a day. Um, the people here in L.A. have been wonderful. The staff has been sensational. The audiences have been fabulous. And I want to thank all of you for watching. 